Hello, good morning. Uh, myself, Alithi Adam, and here today we lecture on the engineering material on the calculation of the forging load. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the forging processes and the different machines by which we can done the forging process uh, like the uh, board hammer, power hammer and mechanical press and hydraulic press. So by these machines, the forging load is applied on the workpiece and the ram is also participate in the load apply because the weight is considered in the load and generally we uh, uh, load calculating is in the terms of energies so friction is also uh, considered in this load calculation so here it is by this formula the total energy is required for the deformation processes so here it is the total energy is denoted by the uh, u total is which is equals to the summation of the ideal energy friction energy and the redundant energy the redundant energy is, or the redundant work is that does not contribute the shape change in the vertices okay and the efficiency is calculated by this formula the energy ideal energy to the total energy so here it is the range of the different efficiencies for the extrusion rolling and for the closed die forging so here it is 0.3 to 0.6 for the extrusion point uh, 0.752.9795 for the rolling and for the closed die forging the range will be 0 0.10 to 0 0.20 here the calculation for the forging load can be divided into the three great cases according to the friction in the absence of the friction second the low friction condition means the lower bounded analysis or the slight condition and third one is higher friction condition which is sticky friction condition the effects of the forging on the micro structures so here it is the three diagram of the different processes so in first this, this is the forging process the grain structure result will be here it is the two grain flow in this uh, structure and in the second this process is by the machining and the uh, grain flow as a broken like the like that this is the broken type of grain flow and in the third case uh, here it is in the no grain flow and this is the casting process the formation of the grain structure in the uh, forge parts is elongated in the direction of deformation the metal flow during the forging provides the fiber microstructure which is exposed by the etching this is structure which better mechanical properties in the plane of the maximum strain but lower across the thickness the workpiece often um, under, uh, uh, undergo recrystallization therefore provide the finer grain compared uh, to the cast dendrite structure resulting in the improved mechanical properties now the residual stresses in the forging the residual stresses is produced in the forging as a result in the homogeneous deformation are the generally small because the formation is normally carried out well into the hot working region however the appreciable residual stresses and the deformation can be occur on the quenching of the steel forging in the heat treatment the large forging 
uh, are the subjected to the formation of the small cracks or the flags at the end of the cross section this is the associated with the high hydrogen contain usually present in steel ingots of the large size coupled with the presence of residual stresses the large forging therefore have to be slowly cooled from the work temperature for example the working in the forging in ash for the period of the time using the controlled cooling furnace the finite element analysis is used to predict the residual stresses forging as we discussed in the previous class now the forming texture uh, this is the crystallography of the orientation of the gram the in first diagram this is the cast iron structure and in the second diagram this is the fabricated structure in the forged steel so here it is the you see the grains mainly the uh, epi epidextral and the dendrites of the equex grains and in the second forging the uh, redistribution of the grains in the working direction this is the working direction therefore the redistribution of the grains in the that direction and uh, in this the dendrite these are the dendrites or the equex grains now the forging defects uh, surface cracks caused by the excessive stress or the improper stress distribution as the part is being formed if there is a insufficient volume of the material to fill the die cavity completely the wear may be bulk during the forging develop the laps and on the other hand if the wear is too thick excess material flow passes the already formed portion of the forging and develop the internal cracks as we see in for diagram so here it is we discuss this is the block forging and this is the actual forging and this is the beginning of the finishing and this is are the two die upper die and this is the lower die and this is the uh, forging object so here it is this is the uh, beginning finishing process here it is when we uh, the this distance or the material is not completely filled with the uh, dies uh, filled with the material in the die so wrap is bulk here and here it is this is the wrap and this is the rim portion so wrap is the bulk due to the uh, not filling the die completely with the uh, material and in the fourth here it is the uh, the wrap is too thick and the excess material flow passes already from the portion and the forging develop the internal cracks here it is the steps of the forging this is the forging beginning and this is the die cavities are being filled these are the die cavity and which is filled by the material and the direction of the ram is towards the downward direction through the pressing process or the hammering process and here it is the cracks developed in the ribs here it is the cracks developed in the ribs as we see in the diagram the cracks propagate through the ribs the defects in the forged part the defects commonly found in the forged part that have been subjected to the plastic deformation are as the follows the defects resulting from the melting practice such as the uh, die slags and the blow holes in gods defects such as the uh, pegs cracks scraps uh, full surface and the segregation uh, in third the defects due to the faulty forging design the defects of the mismatch forging because of the improper placement of the metal in the die 
the defects due to the faulting design drop the forging die next the uh, defects resulting from improper forging such as the seams cracks laps etc the defects result from the improper heating or the cooling of the forging part such as the burning metals and the decarburized steel some well identify the common forging defects along with their reasons are given as here first the mismatch forging reason is due to the non alignment of the proper die halves second um, broom and the overheated metal reason is this is the cause to improper heating of the metal at the high temperature for the long time and third is fabricated flow line discontinue reason is that um, this is the occur because of the very rapid plastic flow of the metal and for these scale pits reason is there are the form by uh, squeezing of the scale into the metal surface during the forging and the fifth is oversized component and the reason is due to the worn out dies incorrect die and misalignment of die halves now the next process is the swaging the swaging is generally involves the hammering of the rod or the tubes to reduce its diameter where the die itself act as a hammer the turn swaging is also applied to process there is a mat material is forced into the confined dies to reduce its diameter here it is in the diagram we see the systematic state of the rotating swaging processes this is the uh, here it is the retainer so this is the retainer and this is the hammer these are the hammers and these are the die in um, brown color and this is the planetary rulers these are the planetary rulers and this is the driven okay so here it is the compress by the these dies uh, uh, by the rotating the planners and we uh, compress the workpiece and in the second diagram the forming internal profile on the tubular workpiece by the sage so here it is this is the ram this is the die and this is the workpiece here it is the material is used because we manufactured a um, tube type of structure in this uh, diagram uh, a die is closely swapping machine showing forming of the stepper shaft so here it is these are the backers this is work piece initially it is in completely round shape and these are the two dies again and here it is these are the wedges these are the two wedges and this is the swaging process so here it is the in the die there is a uh, cavity is formed for the stamp shaft and here it is the ejector when it is compress the shaft for the next processing so here it is the ejector and this is the ejecting position of the part Uh, in the fourth diagram, this is the typical parts made by the swaging. So here, this is the swaging processes. Swaging with with or without metal. So in first diagram, the swaging of the tube without a metal, not increasing the wall thickness into the die gaps. here this is the tube like a structure and this is the die and both are compress this part and in second diagram the mandrel is used okay so this is the mandrel so this is mandrel is used and here the die angle will be alpha so 
uh, and swaging will with the mandrel not that the final ball thickness of the tube depends on the mandrel diameters uh, these are the shapes of the cross section of the tube produced by the swaging on the shaft mandrels refilling the internal spiral grooves in the small gun barrel can be made in this process now the impression die drop hammer forging in the open die hammer forging as we see the simple and the flexible process not practical for the large scale production it is the slow type of process the size and the shape of the resulting work piece are the depends on the skill of operator now in the impression die or the closed die forging overcome these difficulties by using the shape dies to control the flow of metal consist of the set of the die one half of these x attached to the hammer or to the half of the anvil so here it is the systematic diagram of the impression die forging showing the partially filled um, partially die filled and the beginning of the flash is formed at the center sketch and the final shape is flash in the right hand sketch so here it is uh, the these are the upper die this is lower die and this is the work piece so here it is the shape of the object when which is be required so here it is the shape of the die okay and this is the when we compress the die with the help of pressing machine um, then we obtain the final shape of the object so this is the impression die forging process impression die drop hammer thing uh, hammer forging the heat metal is the heat metal is positioned to the lower cavity and the struck one or more blow by the upper die the hammering uh, cause the metal to flow to completely fill the die cavity excessive metal is squeezed out around the periphery of the cavity to form the flash when the final forge is completed the flash is trim off and by the trim die impression die drop hammer forging again the accurate work piece size is required since the complete filling the cavities must be assured with no excessive material the major advantage of the elimination of the scrap generated during the flash formation the final shape and size are set by the additional forging in the final or the finishing impression the shape of the various active cavities force the matter to flow in the desired direction the bolt hammer steam hammer and the air hammer or the pressure steam pressure hammer are used to impress die forging after the forging the flash is trim off the part of the square is at the room temperature the impression die forging here it is as we see these diagrams now here it is the flash this part is called the flash and this cavity is for the flash is called the gutter and this is the parting line of the die here the first this is the flat point these are the flat points and these are the corners of the die and the object and this is the trim line so this uh, this flash is trimmed by the die the staging impression forging solid roller billet the important thing is that the formation of the flash with 
uh, is access metal that is the sequence training of the standard terminology of the various features of the forging dies. The trimming flash after the forging. How to trimming process is uh, done by the die. The trimming flash from the forged part not that the thin metal in the center to remove by the punching. So here it is the uh, this is the initial before trimming condition. So here it is the punch and this is the trimming die and this is our object. Okay. And this is the uh, sludge means extra material and this is the stationary punch which support the object and this is the flush scrap by removed by the die. So when it is the move this is move in downward direction and this is move in, this is the stationary form. So when it is moved in downward then this part is removed by this trimming die. So here we see that this flash scrap is removed by this die. So this is the mirror image of the uh, before trimming and after trimming. Now this is the uh, summary or the conclusion of the forging process. Uh, mainly hot forging, this is also called the blacksmith. Now using the water power, steam and electric hydraulic machines as we see in the, our lecture. Um, heavy forging, uh, the heavy forging, the hydraulic press, slow, higher force sequence, the pieces up to the 200 tons for the force up to the 25,000 tons. Simple tool spins metal into the shape which is seen in the open die forging. The sufficient forging must be given to break up the as a cast structure. The reheating is often needed to maintain the sufficient temperature for the hot working. The forging is the costly but the elimination some as the cast defects. Continue grain flow in the direction of the metal is revealed by the etching. Impurities includes the secretion have become the allocated and unlike casting gives the superior properties of the direction of Conclusion. So this is the conclusion of the forging topic. Now this is the new topic. This is the hot and raw cold working process. In the cold working process, the plastic deformation which is the carried out in the temperature region and over the time interval such that the strain hardening is not relieved is called the cold working process and it is done below the recrystallization temperature. So here it is the some cold working processes, the cold rolling process, cold forging process, cold extrusion process, bending process, drawing process and shearing process. So here we discuss these process one by one. Now the reason for the cold working provides the better surface finish and the dimensional precision. So these are the two rollers and this is the metal. Here we see the thickness of the metal is more here and here it is the, uh, there is a, some temperature is provided to this rod and these rollers are rotates in opposite direction. Therefore, the metal is um, the diameter of the metal or the thickness of the metal is reduced. The cross section area is also reduced and it is cooled after the processing of the rolling. It is cooled by the water jet and these are the uh, forwarding rollers. Now the advantage of the cold working process are 
a better surface finish may be achieved by this process dimensional accuracy can be excellent because the work is not hot so does not shrink on the cooling also the low temperature means the total such as the dies and the rollers can be last a long time without wearing out usually there is a no problem with oxidate oxidative effect such as the steel formation in fact the cooling rolling for example we make the such scale comes or oh, comes of the surface of the previous hot work object next the cold amount of work uh, cold work may be introduced here we see in the diagram the effect of cold working on the tensile strength hardness ductility and the drain side the curve below ductility is show or represent the change in uh, grain size so here it is on the y axis the grain size we shows the ductility and the strength and hardness and here it is the amount of the work cold work in terms of percentage of the cold work in the in this diagram we see this is the hardness curve the its mean the amount of the cold work is increase the hardness will be increase and when the cold work percentage is increase and the strength is also increase but when the cold work percentage is increase then the ductility of the object is decrease so here we see the uh, this is the microstructure where there is a no cold work on the object so this is the original microstructures of the object so after cold work the this is the microstructures of the object so here we see the ductility represent the in the grain size as with the cold working the grain structure of the material is made to flow follow the uh, deformation direction which can be uh, good for the strength of the final product the strength and the hardness are increases although at the expense uh, of the ductility next the problem related to the working near hot metal are the eliminated next there is a limit to how much cold work can be done on the given work piece of the metal see the discussion about the accumulation of the damage in the form of plate up to up dislocation higher force are required to produce a given deformation which means we need the heavily built strong forming machine now come to the hot working process the hot working refers to the process where the metals are deformed above the their recrystallization temperature and the strain hardening does not occur in the hot working the hot working perform at the elevated temperature however the hot working at the room temperature because of the low melting temperature uh, here it is the hot working processes the rolling process forging process extrusion process hot drying process pipe welding process piercing or the punching process the reason for the hot working at the elevated temperature metal weaken and become more ductile here it is the most important continuous hot working processes in the first this is suppose this is our initial object so this is the slab which is in rectangular size when it is passes through the rollers it's convert into the sheet 
or the scapel. Okay, so this scapel is convert and fold into the pipe or the tubes, and it is also in the strip form, uh, which is used to make the tin plates or to tin boxes. And in the second, this is the room, which is the cuboid structure. So here it is the passes through the uh, structural shape of the rollers. The, here it is the two rollers we use. Here it is the two rollers is used. So here this is the structural shape which is used in the construction of the buildings. And this is the rail which is track of the train. So this is the uh, next one is the tube rolls means uh, completely suppose there is a initial shape is oval AD and completely in the round shape so here it is the tube in round shape and then the mandrel we use or the seamless pipe is used where it is in this type of roller are used and this is the ballots and the this type of rollers is used for the ballots so here it is the com completely in this type of bar and then it is converted into the required shape or the desired shape and when we use the, this type of rollers then the wires is formed by this rods and uh, this is the uh, most important continuing hard working processes the advantage of the hot workings are lower working force to produce the give the shape uh, given shape which means the machines involved does not have to be strong which means they can be built more cheaply the possibility of the producing the very dramatical shape change in the single working step without causing uh, direct uh, large amount of internal stress cracks or which is in the cold working. Sometimes the hot working can be combined with a casting process so that the metal in the cast and then uh, immediately hot work. This saved money because we don't have to pay for the energy to reheat the metal. The hard working tends to break up the large crystal in the metal and then produce the favorable alignment of the elongated crystal. The hard working can be removed the some kinds of defects that occurs in the casting metals. It can close gas pockets, means bubbles or white in the casting bullets and it may be also break up non-metallic slags which may be sometimes get caught in the melts. These are the limitations of the hot working process. If the crystallization temperature of the work is metal is high, for example, if we, uh, we are talking about the steel, special map uh, specialized metal methods are needed to pr protect the machine that work the metal. The working process is also dangerous to the human operators and very unpleasant and the uncomfortable to work near. The surface finish and the hot work steel tends to the pretty crude because the dies and the rollers wear quite rapidly there is a lot of dimension change as the work object uh, cool their constant uh, annoying problem and skill uh, formation on the subject of the hot steel. Uh, this is the rolling process. The aluminium is first passes through the hot rolling rolling means and then transfers to the cold milling for the finishing. The hot withdrawal millings prior to the rolling the aluminium is in the form form of an ingots which can 
be up to the 600 mm thick. This inverse is then heated to around 5000 degree centigrade and passes the several times through the hot rolling means this gradually reduces the thickness of the metal to around up to the 6 mm. This is the this thicken, uh, th thinner aluminium is then coiled and transformed to the roll milling for the further processing. And the roll milling, there is a various types of the uh, roll rolling mills and they produce the various types of roll produce which thickness as the low point 0 0.15 millimeter. In the general type of produce depends on the alloy used the rolling deformation and thermal treatment used in the process as well as carefully adjustment to the mechanics and the chemistry of the process. Rolling wheels are controlled by very precious mechanism and the measuring system. Uh, here it is the ingots. This is the ingots, and these are the rollers. The passes through these rollers, then it is converted into the plates, sheet, or the foils. These are the supporting uh, to meet the path. Uh, these are um, these rollers are the participate to reduce the thickness of the sheet. So as we see the inverts, the size is too much thick and after the passes through the rollers, the, the foil thickness is very much less according with reference to the inverts. The rolling is fabricating process in which the metals, plastics, paper, glass etc. is passes through a pair or the pairs of the rollers these are the two types of the rolling process flat and the profile rolling in the flat rolling the final shape is produced is either classed as the sheet which thickness is less than 3 mm and is also called strip and the flat type of the, the flat type uh, in which thickness is more than 3 mm in profile rolling, the final product may be uh, around uh, roll, rod and the other shape bar such as the structural section, uh, beams, channels, joint etc. The rolling is also classified according to the temperature of the metal rolls. If the temperature of the metal is above the recrystallization temperature then the process is in terms of the hot rolling. If the temperature of the metal is below the recrystallization temperature and the process term is cold rolling. So again here it is the two rollers and the sheet is passes through the these rollers and the thickness is reduced up to the 3 mm. Now drawing process. What is the drawing? The drawing is an operation in which the cross section of the solid rods, wires or tube is reduced or changing the shape of pulling it through a dais. The principle of this process consists of the reducing the thickness of the pointed taper wires by drawing. It is a conical operating uh, cooperating the tool made of the hard material, the wire will be uh, take shape of the hole. So these are the conical uh, uh, opening of the dies. And this is the die angle which is represented by the alpha. So here it is pulled with the uh, force and it is converted into the wires or the rods. When the initial uh, initial diameter of the rod is more, 
then which passes through the this type of dye the diameter will be reduced and convert into the wires or rods the drawing improve the strength and the hardness when uh, these properties are to be developed by the cold work and not by the uh, sequence heat treatment there is uh, where it is used this process is widely used for the production of the thicker walls seamless tubes and the cylindrical therefore the shaft the spindles and the small pistons and the raw material for the fastener such as the rivet bolt screw etc these are the drying tools the most important tools in the drying process is without doubt the draw plates this consists from the plate is high grade of steel into which similar shapes poles have been placed uh, those size is even it be uh, evenly uh, reduced from one pole to the another the most important draw plate have round tools and to use to reduce the size or the round wires in the first diagram we see the wires is pulled with the help of the draw tongs and in the draw bench this is the draw bench to use by this wheel we rotate and so we pull the wire from the bay between the dies how such a draw plate pole is made so here it is the conical cone and the draw cone this is the conical cone and this is the draw cone and this is the cylindrical portion uh, with, with the clearance angle the drawing this is the drawing process here we see the how such dry plate pole is made now the deep drawing the deep drawing and the pressing involve the combination of the uh, bending and the uh, screeching uh, the simplest example of the processes involve the fabrication of a cup from the uh, circular sheet blank uh, for the deep drawing operation the quality of the strip required should be non directional and of the correct combination of the hardness and the grain size of the tooling in the diagram we see this is the punch and this is the black black hole and these are the dies and this is the blank okay so here when the punch is punch uh, is strike on this blank the blank shape is like a cup so this is the final shape after the strike the punch on the blank then this is the uh, these are the flange of the cup and this is the bottom of the cup and this is the wall of the cup uh, thank you very much